Welcome to part 9 of our building a game character tutorial. So in this part, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, rig up the cape and I also made this really simple uh, sword that he's holding as well, just so we can test and see how that uh, works with our human IK uh, skeleton, right? So um, this is a preview in Marmoset toolbag, so I can show you a tutorial on how I brought this character in as well and just set up quick lighting. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to see how the assets look inside a game engine, right? So Marmoset toolbag is kind of um, a great way to test and see how your um, models or characters would look in a game engine such as Unreal or Unity with real-time shading, right? So this is um, kind of a real-time, this is not a rendering, right? It's actual real-time engine uh, lighting. And I'm pretty satisfied. I think he came, the character came out really, uh, really nice. Um, the one thing that I didn't cover in tutorial is in um, Substance Painter, I added a couple of uh, uh, tattoos, and these are just simple Photoshop stamps, just a simple PSD files that you can just stamp right onto the skin. Uh, I also added a couple uh, jewelry pieces on his ears, just so he looks a little more dangerous. A couple hoops. Um, and I'm uh, very happy with how he's looking. So in this uh, in this lesson, let's go ahead and see. Oh, and, and then of course the shoulder pads too. But this is just um, a simple extrusion from the existing geometry. So nothing, nothing fancy. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into Maya and see if we can um, rig up the cape next. All right. So here I am in Maya, uh, and this is where we left off on part um, eight. So I'm going to unhide my cape and might as well unhide the sword as well. So this is uh, my sword. If you if you would like to um, bring your own sword, you can bring uh, any sword from any game as long as it's a PBR asset. Or you can quickly, uh, you can see I'm selecting it so you can see the wireframe. It's It could not be more simple. I just created a uh, like a low poly. My, my sword right now is 238. Poly, so it's like perfect uh, game asset. So maybe, you know, create your own little sword that makes sense um, for kind of the style of character that we're making. And um, let's see if we can uh, attach it to the hand as well as uh, attaching the, the cape. All right, so let's just align the, the sword with the hand and I'm going to jump into perspective view, press F. And I'm not really uh, concerned about the hand not being perfectly aligned. I just want it to be uh, about in the area where the sword needs to be. And we can always adjust it once he closes his hands, right? Like, looks like he's holding the sword. All right, so I think this is pretty good. Next, um, let's make sure that the cape is perfectly aligned, uh, aligned, which it's not because um, we put the character in the T-pose, right? So make sure that if you do have a cape and you created a cape for your character as well, make sure that it's uh, it makes sense and that it's not covering uh, the, uh, it's not under the shoulders, right? Because we adjusted the geometry. We just ge adjusted the pose in the last video. So on my end, uh, something like this makes sense. And now what I would like to do is I'm gonna tr freeze transformations on the cape. And let's do the same thing for the sword. So scale is one and the location is zero. And now let's just add a couple uh, little joins th that will allow us to control uh, both of these. So I'm gonna jump in the uh, human IK, I'm gonna jump out of the control rig and just go into uh, none, just so I'm kind of back in my rigging mode where it's just the joins showing. And from the top view, 
I'm going to go to uh, rigging. Let's go to uh, skeleton, create joint, and let's just simply create a joint that is resembling a sword. So it's gonna go from kind of the uh, handle, right? All the way to, I'm just gonna go down the middle. Instead of going over here, I'm just gonna go like here. And this is gonna be uh, my sword, okay? So once this is done, let's make sure that it's also aligned well in the uh, front view. So I'm gonna grab my move tool and move it to the middle of the sword. You can press F if you need to. And just make sure this is aligned with the middle. Very nice. All right. Now what we need to do is, um, let's go ahead and call this joint a sword so we can always easily find it uh, later if we needed to uh, during animation. So I'm gonna call this a uh, sword. And maybe we can say sword joint. All right, so we know it's a joint. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, select the parent, I mean the, the child, and I'm gonna make a link to the hand. So I'm gonna hold on uh, shift and click on the hand uh, joint, just like this. And now I'm gonna press P. So as you can see, if I click on the hand, that's also controlling the uh, the sword. I need to take this sword and add it to the um, to the skeleton, right? So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna go to skin, bind skin, and let's go ahead instead of geodesic, let's just do a classic distance. And I believe that's the default. Yeah, that is the default. And I'm just gonna say apply and close. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the sword and go to skin, paint skin weights. And let's go ahead and right click on our sword joint. And I'm gonna turn off the use color ramp. And as you can see, the sword is currently being um, added to the joint, but it's not 100% uh, flooded, right? It's not, not every vertex is 100% link linked to this uh, sword joint. So to fix this, I'm gonna go to replace, pump up the opacity to uh, one or 100% and do the same thing with the value and just press flood. As soon as I press flood, you can see now the entire sword is linked to this uh, joint, which means if we take it and uh, attempt to rotate it, it will control the sword mesh, which is great. This also means if we grab the hand and attempt to rotate it in any way, the sword will also be moving, which is uh, fantastic. And at the same time, we can also grab the sword joint and position it any way we want, and that will not affect the hand in any way, right? So at any point, you have the ability to move the sword around, uh, even with your keyframes, which is really, uh, really cool, right? So I can maybe even do a nicer job aligning it to the hand if I needed to. And again, we can do the we can do a little more of this once we close the hand. All right, very nice. So the next thing uh, that I would like to uh, rig is the the cape. Now for the cape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my side view, and I'm going to sure I'm going to make sure that I can select the mesh. And let's go ahead and go to rigging, skeleton, create joints. And just like before, um, let's create some joints, but we just have to decide how many. And for the cape to be able to maybe swing in the wind, it needs more than one, right? So 
let's go ahead and create maybe one, two, or I guess this is one. And let's do uh, two and three. So if I click on it, you can see I added three links. And I think this should be enough, uh, where it's simple enough, but um, it, it, it should be dynamic enough for us, right? Um, next, what I'd like to do is, just like before, let's go ahead and make sure it's centered, which it looks, it looks good. I'm going to make sure my um, child is selected, and I have to figure out where do I want to link it to. And I'm going to hold on the shift key and press on this um, joint here. And that's going to be my parent. I think that makes the most uh, sense. So I'm going to press P. And just like before, you can see this is really important that the triangle is pointing to the child from the parent. Make sure the flow uh, makes sense, which means you can select the child and that will have its own um, ability to move around right without affecting anything and at the same time if you select the parent that will also select the child right so that's uh, what we're trying to achieve very cool so now let's go ahead and name this just like we did before let's go to outliner and you can hold on the shift key and press plus if you needed to and just go down to your joint and maybe uh, let's call this cape maybe cape top this could be cape middle and this could be cape bottom and finally the last joint let's call it cape end all right so once we have that um, I'm going to select the cape and I need to make sure my mesh is uh, selectable. So I'm going to select my um, cape and what I need to do is add it to the rig. So I'm going to um, hold down shift key and click on the pelvis and go to rigging and do a skin, bind skin. And again, this is just default. All right, so now we can see again the joints in the cape turned color indicating that they are indeed controlling uh, something, right? So let's see if we need to adjust anything. So I'm going to grab my cape and attempt to move it. So this looks, uh, the top looks. Um, I think pretty good. You can always at any point, even during the animation, you can come back here and adjust the weights. Uh, this is working pretty nice. And that seems to work too. But again, as you're posing it at any point, you can adjust the weights. Keep that in mind. So if we wanted to review and just see what the pay the weights look like, let's you can always go to paint skin weights. And um, Let's go ahead and right, uh, right click and you have to find the select influence and you can just look and see, right? So the influence of the cape is starting right here and all of these are being controlled uh, to the closest joint, which is sort of the shoulder, right? So if I select on the shoulder and select, select, say select influence, I can see that this shoulder or clavicle is also affecting the cape. And um, honestly, at this point, it's 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 kind of difficult to figure out if this makes sense or not, or if this needs to be adjusted until you begin to pose the character or animate the character, right? So skin weights is not something that you just do once and it's done. If the character becomes more complex, like in this case, there's a cape, maybe you have some other gear uh, added on. Uh, it's something that you can always come back and test and adjust during different poses and animations. I just wanted to point that out. Um, and I can, of course, view my weights on this. And this is kind of grabbing all the middle pieces. And let's make sure the bottom 
is uh, controlling. I can just click on the bottom here. Bot uh, bottom is influencing all the all those as well, right? So that that looks good. Um, we can even move it up and down, create like a wind effect. We can rotate it. Very nice. Um, so this pretty much concludes the rigging portion of our character. And uh, next, let's maybe uh, plug him into a uh, motion capture from uh, Mixamo. Maybe he can be running. And uh, we can take a look at animation layers as well, because we will need kind of a custom. Um, even if the character is running, we're going to need a, a custom hold on the sword, right? So he's like holding it in the fist because the motion capture most likely will have the hand open. Um, and then on top of that, uh, we can see how we can control the cape so it doesn't go through the character as he is uh, maybe running, right? So let's go ahead and do that uh, in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe to let me know that this is uh, valuable and helpful and I will see you in next lesson.